Oh, in this tutorial we're just going to go over the uh, heck reaction. The heck reaction involves the uh, coupling of an air uh, airlide, such as this, with uh, an alkene. In this case we've got an alpha beta unsaturated um, ester. And it uses um, a palladium catalyst. In this case we've got a uh, palladium tetracus uh, triphenylphosphine. Um, but you can use uh, palladium acetates as well. Um, this for this mechanism, we'll just use palladium zero, and you will see it's uh, it's easier to uh, get a grasp of the reaction. So basically, we get palladium insertion here in between the carbon bromine bond. So it's an oxidative um, addition. So it goes from palladium zero to palladium two, and then you get um, coordination of the alkene to palladium and then transfer of the air out group and then loss of HBr um, eventually which will be mopped up by the way with a base so we'll have some base in there as well typically triphenyl tri sorry trithalamine something like that just to mop up the acid that's produced the HBr in this case um, the triphenyl phosphines that are present as they're basically just to stabilize the catalyst just to put uh, push electron density into uh, the catalyst to keep it all nice and stable and like I say it's a catalyst um, usually used in for the heat reaction it's usually used in a, a, a percentage molar range um, say five mole percent or something like that but there are variants of this where you can get down to um, very low concentrations of palladium catalyst depending on um, um, like I said the palladium catalyst that's used or the ligands that are used but I won't go into detail at the moment I'll just go into the heck reaction the original heck reaction so this is a catalytic cycle I've already drawn it out just to uh, speed things up a little bit really um, but like I say we've got palladium zero this is what we start with so this is let's add a number one on here so this is this is where we start number one let's do that in a different color so it stands out do that in red okay so palladium zero oxidative addition into the aryl bromide bond in this case to give a palladium two complex i've just put l there for um triphenylphosphine um, you typically see um, L used for a ligand just to support the palladium. What happens now is um, while it's in this state, you get the alkene coordinates to palladium. So it's not it's not got a covalent bond, but what it's got it's got called a an e to two coordination there. So it's got two atoms basically coordinating through a pi complex uh, so through the p orbitals there on on. Um, Hopefully I'm still in red. So imagine the p orbitals there on the alkene, donating electron density into uh, palladium there. Okay, into a vacant orbital. So that's an eta two, eta two complex. I'll just undo that and clean things up a little bit. Okay, so that it coordinates first, and then what happens is you get transfer across um, from um, here to give this species here so what we've done we've we've transferred the air out group this hair out group here just draw a... and we've transferred palladium across that double bond so it's a bit like if you drew the mechanism the actual place that it goes on is a bit like a Michael addition so it'll come on here because this is delta positive um, if you drew the resonance form, let's just quickly draw the resonance form so we, I can explain what I mean by that. There's it. I think the distribution of electrons here, let's move that there like that and that there like that. So you've got a, a resonance form for the uh, ester that looks a bit like this. So that's positive there. So the overall, this is delta positive here, and this is delta negative here. So you can get a uh, like a nucleophilic attack there if you will. So this transfers from here onto here, 
and then because it was an e to 2 complex these uh, the p orbitals shift over and go from a p orbital to an sp3 orbital and transfer those electrons back into there keeping the oxidation state of palladium still to 2 so that's how we get addition across there and that is a chemoselective um, uh, sorry, that, that's a regioselective um, addition across there as well. That's why the Aral group goes in that position, palladium goes in that position. And then, then what we have is um, alignment then of, um, of the um, palladium with the proton to um, um, lose um, here, I've just wrote trying to explain what I'm trying to say so you get um, transfer of that across there like that so that goes down there and that goes across there to give you the double bond your product palladium 2 still got uh, the ligands attached and now it's got the HBr which eventually gets mopped up by base um, to give palladium 0 back so this is where the base comes in just to keep everything buffered really and I'll pick that up like that okay so what I've drawn there is the dissociation so this is again an e to 2 complex onto the plate palladium dissociates to give this and then loss of HBr to give you your starting material your palladium catalyst again and that will just keep going around there and keep going around that cycle until it runs out of um, of reagents really the, the number of times it goes around is called the, um, the turnover number and the turnover frequency can also be calculated. I won't go into the detail of that now. I'll save that for other palladium type of catalysts which are a little bit more interesting in terms of, of those numbers. Um, um, but some of the things that can hinder the progress of this is probably oxidation of triphenyl phosphine up to the triphenyl phosphine oxide because that's going to destabilize that anything that can possibly poison the catalyst by coordinating instead of the ligand if your if your product is actually um, a better ligand than triphenyl phosphine all these kind of things can hinder the reaction so these are the things you need to be aware of when you're doing the heck reaction so I hope you enjoyed this I'm, I'm going to post up the um, the um, catalytic cycle that you've seen me draw here because um, I didn't really go through the mechanism in that much detail, but uh, you know you can take that away with you and print it off. So that should be uh, the side of the of this of this video, and that's the heck reaction.